Hey guys, it's Nerdnik, and this is the sixth part of my How to Design Foam Board Airplanes tutorial. And in this part, we're going to be looking at how to design, or I'd rather say finish, your tail feathers, your horizontal and your vertical stabilizer. And before we jump into that, there's one extra thing I need to show you guys on the fuselage from the previous part that we didn't do. Um, we need to add a crease line right here. This uh, I usually use blue to indicate that it's not a cut, though this could technically be a 50% cut, but a blue line to show, hey, you need to crease this part of the design so that your fuselage can taper as you move back towards the edge of the plane. So go ahead and add that and make sure you don't forget that. I also finished up uh, all the pieces that we talked about um, right um, on the last part of the video, so those are all done now. I'm caught up. Oh, and I guess I'll give you one other uh, update here. I, I made a little bit of a change here on the nose. This used, this line used to go straight out and cut over, but because the uh, you know the, the front section is so curved, um, I want I'm going to try something different here. I'm, I haven't done this before, but I basically I'm, I'm tapering down the sidewall so that the poster board has more room to bend um, and not be so squared off. I don't know how it's going to look. I'll play with it. Hopefully it's cool and this is something new I do. Otherwise, I'll go back to having it squared off. You guys don't have to try that with me here, but it's just something I'm, I'm giving, a, giving a test to. So, yeah, so if you look at that, it looks different. That's why. Okay, let's go ahead and jump over to the horizontal and vertical stabilizer. So from the pre previous videos, we have the outline shape of the vertical and my horizontal is somewhere over here. Yeah, it's over on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and move this guy over so we can work on it. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and get the um, uh, fuselage. Um, actually, let me hide this piece. We're going to get that guy out of the way and get the fuselage piece um, visible so you can you can figure out w one section and then we're going to hide that out of the way because we don't want it there. And what we're going to do is basically draw our bottom line. So the um, you know horizontal stabilizer sits on the fuselage on this line and it's notched in with this tab. Um, and we need to establish this line with the vertical um, stabilizer. So just go ahead and draw that line for now and leave that there. Now, after that, we can go ahead and hide the fuselage because we, we don't want to see it right in this moment. So we're going to throw that there. And what we need to design is a couple things. We need to design the notch that's going to go from the vertical into the horizontal stabilizer. And right now, I don't know where to put that yet, but I just need to get it into place so we can adjust it later. And, and that notch kind of looks like this. It's going to be 0.47 or 48 or so um, tall. And it's going to stick out, we'll just say this far. Doesn't really matter yet. We're going to adjust all of this. Um, but this notch actually goes down to here. And then it cuts over this way. And it connects out that way. And then this extends back. So we're gonna get those pieces in place because we're gonna move these around a little bit here in a minute. But what we basically are are adding is, um, and I'll go straight up here like that. What we're basically adding is the basic structure of how this piece, you know, how the vertical stabilizer flap kind of works here. And this actually needs to be red because this is a bevel line. <coughs> And in, in theory, the uh, horizontal stabilizer now is going to fill you know, the cavity that's here and here. And this tab will sit inside of it. But uh, we don't know where to place that yet, but this is the shape that we want. right? So we basically just created the basic shape and put that in there. Now let's go ahead and bring the horizontal stabilizer back into frame and figure out where the heck does it sit. To do that, I'm going to bring back my image and if you look on the image from here to here is where it occupies basically the location of the stabilizer. So if I put the placement of this on the image where it should go, my line goes to here, this line goes to about, I would say right about there, right? That's about where it, it's going to sit relative to the wing and, and on the fuselage and inside of the vertical stabilizer. and when I look at this stabilizer now, I kind of want to put this tab 
basically in the middle. So if I drew a line on my horizontal, I want to put this kind of in the middle. And so I need to move it, right? I want to move it back a little bit. So I'm going to select it there, and I'm just going to slide it back. I would say uh, right about there is, is about good, right? Doesn't have to be perfect, but that's a better spot. Okay, so now the location is more central to the horizontal stabilizer, and um, I can actually draw my box here for, boop, this is actually gonna go on the horizontal stabilizer. So I had the vertical now, and I've got this guy. Location is good, but I need to, I need to center it up, so I'm gonna move it down until it's centered with the horizontal stabilizer, right? So now I've got my slot, which is lined up with this slot, and it's in the center of the horizontal stabilizer. So if I hide my vertical, I now have this. Now these guys are red as well. These are your bevel lines for your elevator. Okay, so now we have um, the location right set, we're good. And the next thing we need to bring in is this piece, which is our tail. Um, and I need to bring my picture back for that because this one, we know location wise, it actually goes all the way, and I need to bring the fuselage as well. Do, 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 there it is. Um, this one goes, right, it sits up to here on the fuselage and then extends forward. So if I put it here, that's how far back this piece sits. And now if I move this up to the center, Oh, hide that. So it is now lined up with the end of my fuselage and it's centered on my horizontal stabilizer. So my horizontal stabilizer now sits, or this, the tail sits right in the middle of it. Well, the reason I did this is because I need to bring in the tabs for the fuselage. And this is where, it, this this helps me place them on the um, on the horizontal stabilizer. So I'm going to bring back my fuselage just for a second. If you remember, we put these tabs on the fuselage of this tab. And what I can do is if I trace over that, I now have <coughs> this piece. I can just move it straight up because I want it aligned. If I rotate it now, like that, and it needs to be red because. Actually, no, that's black, that's a cut through. Well, hold on, I do a red because I don't want this to be shown. The top part, I don't want to cut through. So I do a red there, so you leave the top paper. I copy that, flip it over now. I can now line it up with the other one there and then slide it down to there, okay. Now let me hide the fuselage and hide the tail piece. Okay, so now we have these pieces. The angled ones is how the horizontal sits into the fuselage and the center one is where the vertical stabilizer notches into the uh, horizontal stabilizer. So you, you can now join all this up. Now, what I need to adjust on the um, vertical stabilizer now is we don't need to cut all of this off. Um, if you notice, this actually comes. Actually, no, I want that one to full cut. This one does not full cut. I need to add this line here. Yeah, okay, hide the horizontal now. And these need to go into the horizontal. So these two. Okay, so now you have are those my program's like glitching out here, guys. Sorry. Okay, um, so now you have the vertical stabilizer that notch is there because that's where the um, sorry, this is the vertical right, and the the horizontal now notches right up to it. It doesn't go all the way to the buffer line. Some some designs it goes further. Um, but this one 
they're going to butt up and it stops there. And that's that's really one of the placement look, um, you know, uh, guides there. It's going to fit into the notch, but then also it stops uh, and keeps it solid. So that's that. Now I don't like this right now. I don't like how close all these are together. If you if you look at this, this is barely the width of of, of foam, you know, thickness here, and this will get kind of weak. So I want to I want to move this center notch um, forward actually, so that it's not quite as uh, crowded in here. Another thing you could do is you could make these shorter, more or sorry, more narrow, um, not as not as thick of a tab. The thicker tabs help it to be easier to line up and build um, when you, when you talk about the assembly side, but. Uh, as it is right now, it's not it's not as strong. So I'm going to move this guy forward. To do that, if I just select all these pieces, I can move them together. And let me hide the that one. Bring this back now. Now I just moved the notch on the center of the horizontal and the vertical at one time. So if I bring them back, they stay lined up. Right, everything's still good, but you move them together. That's a little better now in terms of there's more foam right the between the two um, or all the slots so there's not going to be any strength problems or whatever there. Now when we when we talk about um, uh, the design right if, you, if you're designing a, um, a, a basic plane right you're not doing um, the uh, sorry thinking here if you're not doing um, like a speed version or or you don't want the um, tail feathers to be two layers of foam thick if you just want one layer of foam this is pretty much done one thing that you could still add that like I do on my designs is I add a barbecue skewer and to do that if you throw in a box there it needs to be um, the width of it needs to be um, doo -doo -doo. this needs to be I don't know why sorry guys my program is like glitching out right now um, okay the, the width of this needs to be 0.25 it's like how thick a barbecue skewer is. So throw that on and then center it. And then put it, um, in terms of the, the horizontal, it should be like central to the design. Um, oops. And that's good. And then make that red, right? So if you want, if you want a single layer stabilizer that's reinforced, this is now done. Um, the way that this is designed as well, these um, elevator services are independent. If you want them to be joined, like the flight test style, um, what you would change in the design is you would add in a connection point here, um, and then it would make it one. Um, the only thing I would say is make sure you want to make this connection point as thick as you want as you can. Um, I would say um, more than a half an inch. Um, otherwise, it, it gets very weak. But if you do that, if you add this piece in, you have to then adjust your um, vertical stabilizer. It has, to, or the rudder itself has to account for that movement. And so, um, what I would do in this scenario, right? If I did this, um, let me hide the horizontal. What I would do is add, and sorry, this one needs to go into the horizontal as well. Horizontal. Okay. What I would do is now that I have my location here. What you need to bring it up um, to this point and then wider and further. And these should also be these are full cuts. And then you need to add um, if, that, if that's your, your for, sorry, if that's your point of where the, the um, center of the horizontal goes to, you need to come out a little bit and give yourself that notch, right? Now, how much and, and how, how far, all of this, um, it has to do with how much throw, right? If you have an elevator deflected, you have to be able to do that deflection and move the rudder left or right, which is why you go past the center point, right? Which, which is here now. Um, the amount of, of rise you need and fall you need is based on the throw itself. Um, this is actually a lot. You you probably won't have this much elevator deflection. So in theory, you could probably you know you could cut this down, right? This could be in theory like this or so, right? Um, as long as you go far enough, far enough in and then give yourself that gap, because as as the rudder deflects each direction, you you consume this space between the center line, right, of the elevator and then the the gap on your rudder. 
Um, so that, that would be acceptable there right, in terms of um, play. But this one here, right, again, this is, imagine this is your deflection. So um, this you, you have to play with. There's no right answer right now. I would start with something like that and then build it, fly it, and see how it might need to be adjusted. And then you can you know do that afterwards on your version two or whatever. Now this design for me is not going to have um, this this section at all because I'm doing split surfaces. And a lot of my designs, if you guys have seen lately, have done this. And I do it because um, it's more scale and it's actually stronger. If you have one surface or one side of your surface, right? Imagine you're joined again. Um, that has the control surface on it, a control rod, a control horn. When you deflect that up or down, um, this section of the control surface is the strongest. Everything moving, you know, this direction away and this direction away get weaker. The, the, the further you go out, the more flex there is from this central point of control. And when you're talking about a, a, um, a, a small amount of foam connecting those surfaces, by the time you get out here, the, the amount of deflection is, is reduced greatly and there's actually a lot of stress that gets put on this joint and it starts to twist and over time it gets weaker, the paper separates on the Dollar Tree foam and it actually will fail. And I don't, I don't want that, right? If you have two points of, of um, contact with the control rod and control horn, then both of these sections are strong and they, they get weaker as they taper out, but there's no torsion or anything on the side or the center here. So it's a little stronger, lasts longer, and I, I prefer it. It's a little more of a headache to build, but hey, uh, I'm, I'm about keeping the plane long term. And for performance, right, at high speed, you want that extra strength with those control points um, and, and, and avoiding that flex. So I, I do it like this, but you can definitely join it and do it for simplicity of build. Um, you know, go with that. All right, so this right, if, if you if you're doing single foam thickness, these are pretty much done, right? You uh, these would fit now together, and then you could put them in the you know the, the fuselage. One one other thing I'll note um, for for strength purposes, right? The way I designed this, if you bring back the fuselage, hide the horizontal just to look at this. The reason I extend this bottom part of the how did this I put this in here um, for horizontal. Um, the reason this extends down and doesn't just cut out is, you know, you're you're gonna have a piece of foam that that be bottom piece that we looked at earlier that sits in this channel right here, right? It's gonna go, <coughs> uh, you know, it's it's embedded all the way down this way. And so what what you've done with this piece now, because it sits down, is this is actually gonna get glued to the bottom plate. If you brought this up, like if it was just a straight line. Um, that's fine, but there's no contact now on the bottom plate with this surface. And if you add that, right, this angle that's the thickness of a piece of foam, right, gap, now it'll it'll glue onto it. So when you glue it in, you can get some extra rigidity there in the tail. So that's why I designed it that way, but otherwise, you know, you could, you could bring it up flat if you wanted. Uh, and then in terms of what do you do up here, really this could end, this whole thing can end at the same place that you join in doesn't need to extend forward. Um, if you extend it forward, you're just putting more surface, you know, more contact area on the horizontal stabilizer, which is good, but there's already a lot here so that you're not, you know, I wouldn't be worried about it. What, what I would be worried about, and, and I know there's some, been some designs that have done this, I think Flight Test has done this before, um, but they, they have this piece, you know, way, way back here. It's just like its own little flap, you know? It's like this tiny little piece or whatever and then this guy um, is like this, right? Um, if you do this, then you have very little contact on the horizontal stabilizer and this becomes weak, right? The joint, this T joint uh, or X joint, I guess, uh, against the vertical and horizontal becomes weak. So I would extend it to the, um, the notch and then you, you should be fine. Okay, so th what I just showed you is how you would design um, a single foam thickness horizontal and vertical stabilizer. What we're going to do now is we're going to modify what we just designed. We're going to use all the same reference points and, and pieces, but we're going to make it account for a two layer thickness of uh, foam. <clears throat> and so if you don't know what I'm talking about, look at the my design for my um, P39 
or my um, uh, chipmunk. They they don't have single foam. They have two foam thickness, and then they're they're beveled, glued together, so it creates a very nice um, tapered, you know, airfoil airfoil surface. And it's it's a lot stronger. I also think it it holds up a lot longer from a durability perspective. It uh, you know, if, if you've ever had a foam plane, um, foam board plane for a year or so, the, the flat surfaces, right, your horizontal stabilizer specifically starts to warp a little bit. And that's because of humidity or just, you know, whatever. It, it, the foam doesn't, it's not perfectly flat. And so th that warpage ends up, you know, eventually causing the plane not to fly. You, it's too bad you got to retire the plane. With the two layers, I have planes that are two years old plus and they are still flat, right? The, the, the surface is still very true. And um, so, so the longevity of, of, a, of a two layer thick piece of, um, uh, or, sorry, the, the, the horizontal stabilizer being two layers thick or the vertical being two layers thick makes it last a lot longer. And, and, and it isn't prone to warping nearly as much. So I prefer to do that if your plane is um, under 800 millimeters wingspan, right, 30 inches or so. I, I probably wouldn't do two layers because that's too thick for the size of the plane. But this one, you know, is 1,000 plus millimeters, and I think um, you know, 40 inches or so. I think that's that that's the perfect range for this. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So let's go ahead and start with the horizontal stabilizer. The way this works is we're going to take exactly what we already have. We're going to this this same principle still applies, and we're going to do a couple things. We're going to extend this, or not extend, but widen this because now your vertical will also be two layers thick, so we need to make this accommodate that. Right now it's 0.47. We're going to make this 0.96, and that now can accept two layers of foam in that channel. So that's, that's step one. Step two is we need to add our bevel line, um, which is this will vary based on your design. Um, if you again, if you're designing a plane that's about 40 inches or so, these measurements will will work. Um, but proportionally, um, it may vary based on the size of your plane. Okay, so for this size of a stabilizer, I want to add at least two centimeters of bevel, which ends up really well because it comes right to about this notch. I don't want to bevel inside this notch, by the way. Um, so two centimeters, I just drew a two centimeter line. I'm going to draw one there, and I'm going to come over to this side and do also a two centimeter line. That tells me about how far up I need to bevel um, on my leading edge. So if I draw a line there, there's that bevel. I can get rid of this. And then on the back side, the trailing edge, um, I need to bevel um, the hinge uh, has to be beveled, right? So you, you cannot bring your bevel in this far, right? If you were like, okay, I'm gonna bevel this far and that's my trailing edge. No, you, you have to bevel your trailing edge. I'm sorry, your uh, your hinge that has to be beveled. So how much? Just enough to where you have a foam bite there, right? Um, sorry, I don't need to draw that line. So there's that. I make these green, it makes it uh, just easy to color coordinate there. So there's my green line that. Now, the other thing I need to do is I need to add a center line, which will make sense here in a second. So I need to put that into the design. There's my center line. Um, and I think, let's think, let's think, let's think. That's it. Yeah, for now. So now we have two inches or two centimeters. And then from the hinge to the trailing edge will be beveled. Proportionally, if, you're, if your plane's bigger, two centimeters might be very small or might be huge or whatever. So proportionally, um, if I look at this, the total width of this plane or this uh, surface is 13.8 and I'm occupying about two centimeters of bevel. So, uh, you know, this is 20% or under is how much you should bevel the leading edge is what I would say proportionally, right? Um, so if two centimeters doesn't make sense, do it about 20, uh, just under 20% um, of, of your of your uh, thickness. Okay, so we've got that. What I'm going to do now is I'm gonna actually going to copy half of my piece. Okay, I've got I've now copied that much stuff. I'm going to control copy. I'm going to paste it now, and then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to delete the barbecue skewer. I'm going to delete this bottom piece. I'm going to delete um, this top piece. And I'm left with this for now. Um, what I'm going to add in now is I'm going to add in my 
bevel line for the trailing edge. And I'm going to go right to the center, which is the same as the other green line right there. I've got that now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over. So I'm going to select it all. I'm going to now reflect it this way. I'm going to bring it over. And we're going to line up this corner right here, this line with this line here. So we're going to we're going to butt those in. Like that. And now um, I'm going to draw and I, I lost that line. I should have had it the whole time. Uh, we're going to add that line back because we're going to go all the way through to there. Okay, so now that we're here, we're actually I'm off a little bit. See that? I gotta I gotta adjust this whole thing. Okay, let's try this again. Let's try that again. Yeah, that's better. Okay, now I'm gonna adjust these pieces in. I don't know what that piece is for, um, and I'm gonna drop one in halfway those ones are good actually I need to leave that open all right okay so now we have this piece this whole piece I'm going to rotate and bring it right into this line those are now lined up I can delete one of these middle lines I don't need two and this one, actually I'll delete both of them because I need to change this color. I need to make this red now. Oops. I need to bevel this. This is now a red line. Okay, there's my bevel line. Cool, it's looking good. I can get rid of the center line now. Don't need that anymore. And what I need to do is copy all of this now. Everything that I just Oops. Just did flip it over vertically. And this one now should notch. Same spot right there. And that should bring it up over here. Like that. Again, we need a red line here. This one is going to be um, red for a bevel line. And that is good there. Okay. So the next thing I need to do is copy this one over. Uh, like this will finish off the bevel on the bottom plate. Oops. I'm going to get it as symmetrical as possible and now we can add in this on this side as well okay so what we have now the bottom piece has the full cut for the vertical stabilizer the top is now notched so when this folds over um, each notch side is, is one sheet thickness of foam so then when they're together they're two We've got our barbecue skewer. These can actually be black now um, because the top will hide the hole here. I usually do red on a single foam thickness um, uh, horizontal stabilizer because I don't want to show the tabs from the top of the plane, but this will be covered now. So I'll, I'm going to switch these to black just for uniformity here. And then um, we've got our trailing edge bevel line. These don't make sense anymore, so I'm going to delete these. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in slight amount of overcut on that side, and then we're going to add a little tiny oops, amount of cut on this side. And so it, this part may not make that much sense why I'm doing this and I'll try to exp explain it for you. 
But basically, um, the way that this builds, right, when you actually put it together, is you pull the paper off all the green, from, from green till the, either the, the trailing edge or the center line. So the only paper left on this is in the center section here and here. So everything else has no paper. Then you bevel from the foam thickness down to the paper around all the edges. You add your barbecue skewer in. You then add glue in the center section and you fold over the top and it creates your airfoiled surface. You then glue up the trailing edge and you you um, take uh, you feather those down so you have a nice crisp trailing edge. Now you don't have a surface yet. There's no movable surface, which is what these cuts are for, right? Once the the entire um, uh, stabilizer is, is is glued down and solid, you then flip it over so it's upside down. With your razor blade, you then score this one layer of the foam, and then you score it again to cut through the second layer of foam, which is the top and then you're able to crack it open and bevel it, right? So you have a, a surface. So we, we need this piece to stay as one this whole time you're building it until you're you're ready to, to, to cut the, the flap, right, the, or the elevator. And so we don't want these to be full cuts, right, or full bevels or anything, because that just ends up getting in the way. And, and by doing this, you have a reference line of where the surface goes, and it allows you to be flexible if you when you fold this over if something's a little crooked or whatever you're not stuck right when you do your bevel they'll be symmetrical on both sides and everything you know builds out really nice so that's why that is you know that way um, so yeah so that is the double thickness horizontal stabilizer so we need to now make an adjustment to the vertical stabilizer so two things right one this um, horizontal is now two layers thick so when we look at um, this guy this gap right now this gap was designed for one layer thick we need to make this bigger and we need to make it bigger going up so if I select this I now need to move this until it's essentially um, I'm sorry I don't know why I, there's so many lines here extra lines that normally I don't have Let's get this out of the way. Um, th this gap here needs to be two layer, which is 90, 0 0.96. There's 0 0.9. <clears throat> if I zoom up a little bit, give ourselves a reference line, 0 0.96. So a little bit more, right? If I grab these again. Yeah. Now the two layer thickness horizontal sailors can fit in this gap. Get rid of this line. We'll extend this one down. We want it to extend into the horizontal stabilizer as much. You don't have to go all the way, but I would go to about here or so. That way, it's, th this helps it. Um, again, that the X, the T intersection right between the two surfaces make it real solid. And we need to add back this one there. Because again, if you look at the horizontal stabilizer, it ends right here. Right. This is the the end of the surface. So that needs to be, needs to be terminated right there on the vertical. Um, okay, so now we can accept <coughs> the thicker horizontal stabilizer, but we don't have our double thickness uh, itself, right? We need to make this thing now accommodate or, or be two layers thick. So same concept on the front, we are going to add a two centimeter or about 20% or less or so, um, uh, you know, bevel. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my line at two centimeters here and here. And I'll add another one uh, on this side over here. So I know how far to come down. Actually, yeah, it's about the same. So that's good. So now this, you could um, do a curved line to follow, you know, the curve. I found that honestly, once you build it out, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. So I don't do that anymore. I'm not too concerned with it because it, it just doesn't make a difference. So you can make it complicated if you really want, but I don't, I'll just do it like this. So there's that. And I'm actually gonna extend this one all the way down to there. And then we're gonna draw one again, the entire elevator or um, rudder surface. So that whatever the surface is needs to be beveled. Right, you you cannot put the bevel on the other side. Right, this would not be okay. If you did this, just like on the wing with the ailerons, 
you create a, you create a gap um, that's very hard. Uh, actually, sorry, on this surface you don't create a gap, but you create a joint that, that gets really stiff because there's like there's glue in it. It's just it's not good, right? This is what you want. You want you want the surface beveled. Okay, so do that for that side. Um, now on the bottom, if you remember the belly piece, which is somewhere where'd it go here? This belly piece um, is expecting on on this design a two layer thickness termination here at the end of the in the plane because again I, I plan to make these you know the, the vertical two layers thick and it sits right here it occupies this space right here now that means up to this point it's expecting that the foam is two layers thick so you you would not want to bevel like this right you wouldn't want to bevel the bottom because then it wouldn't it wouldn't sit right it wouldn't fit right in in the in the fuselage so the bevel goes down and it stops there. That's it. Like you, you, you don't you bevel everything that's on the outside, right? From from the green line towards the trailing edge. You don't bevel inside. So in this case, you know, you're beveling this direction. Up, up, out, 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 out. All of this section is all two layers thick of foam. So once you have this, I think I'm yeah, I'm not missing anything. Yeah, I'm not. Okay, yeah, you're pretty much good, right? What you need now is just two of them, because you have to uh, you have to print out two. And so what I do is usually copy, paste it, and then flip it around. So you have now you have your left and right side or whatever, right? So again, building this, your glue would go in the center here on all the all the papered surface. Still, you'd pull the paper off all of the external part. Um, you'd bevel. Ah, sorry. You'd bevel, um, and then you you know you'd add in uh, uh, you'd glue them together and then add in your your glue for the trailing edge. One one last thing, guys. Sorry, I should have done this before um, I copied it. Is you, you need just like on the vertical or the horizontal stabilizer, we're gonna add two little reference lines. So now we know. Actually, just to make this as consistent as we possibly can on the build side we're gonna add in a center one as well okay so now we have our cut lines right those are just our reference lines so now we can copy and paste this reflect it over and you're good to go if you want to on on the other one you can actually delete these reference lines you don't need it on both sides if you do this uh, and this this might be important for your for your design. If you delete these lines now, what you're forcing the builder to do is to bevel this side, which would be the right side of the surface, right? The right side of the rudder or the elevator, Ugh, the vertical stabilizer. <laughs> um, now, does that matter on this design? No, but it might. Um, for example, if if you bevel your right side, that's also determining where the control surface goes. And maybe your design, the control surface for the elevator has to go on the right side based on the servo placement. And so you don't want the rudder control surface on the same side because they might hit or something. I don't know. Just think about that because if you, if you, if you do this, if you, if you put the guidelines on one side, you force the bevel. If you care about that, do it. If you don't care about it, you can just leave it on both sides. You know, it ends up not mattering. But that's why you may or may not do that. Um, yeah, so th this is uh, this is it. Those are your, those are your two surfaces now. You've got your vertical, you've got your horizontal, and they're ready to join, ready to build, and they'll fit on your fuselage. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you next time.